Hello everybody, it's me! I know I've been a little late at trying to get this video out, but it looks like I waited for the right time because it's October, this spooky month. And what better way to talk about Halloween than with something that really fits the theme? Like I said on my last video, we're gonna take a step away from Monster Hunter because not only do I really love Monster Hunter or Pokemon, or Final Fantasy for that matter. I'm also a huge fan of like tabletop games. For board games, I really enjoy Ankh and Horrified. Horrified is so much fun to play with your friends. Really great cooperative game. But I'm really into card games. Uh, I had gotten back into the Pokemon TCG a couple years ago, recently got into the Final Fantasy TCG. I'm a fan of Ashes as well as Sorcery. And Here to Slay is one of my all-time favorite multiplayer card games to play. It's so much fun. And today, we're going to take a look at, I want to say probably a lesser-known card game. At least, I don't seem to see it mentioned nearly as much as others. And as such, it was a hard time for me to try to find any online copies of the cards. Due to that, I had to take pictures of these cards, so I do apologize of the lower quality of the card pictures. But we're going to talk about Lockwood's Asylum. Because this game might not be as well known, I want to give a brief explanation as to what exactly this game is. Anyone who has played Hero Realms, think of it a lot like that. It's a deck building market based game. Uh, we will use a two-player example here. <clears throat> Each player will have a starting deck of five Frightened Patients and five Stoic Orderlies. Shuffle up your cards and you go through a typical run of play, playing cards that have actions and then using cards to convert to produce in order to purchase other cards within the Asylum. The Asylum is your market. It consists of eight cards, either being monsters or allies. <clears throat> you purchase allies into your room to help combat monsters. Your room is essentially a space in front of the player as you purchase monsters into your opponent's room. The main goal of the game is survival horror. It's to see who can last the longest. The game is rather brutal at times, to be honest, and a lot of that has to do with today's subjects, the horrors. You see, there are three different kinds of cards. As mentioned before, you have allies who are used to help you combat monsters or help get you more cards or set up situations much more efficiently for you when it comes to your room and your deck. While monsters will always be going into rooms to create havoc. They do a lot of damage, they take health from you, and they can also have special conditions that makes dealing with them a lot more difficult. Looking at you, Bone Creepers. But then we have our last card type. These are Horrors. When setting up the Asylum deck for creating the market, you will have five of these evenly dispersed throughout that deck. These are like checkpoints, essentially. They are neither monsters nor allies. They are the greatest threat, as they are the ones who either accelerate your demise or make things just a little bit more inconvenient. Either way, they're essentially like boss monsters that are found throughout this game. While you're only supposed to put 5 within your deck, the base game has about 12 to 13 horrors, and today we're going to take a look at all these horrors and rank them. I'm going to have three different ranks. Our first rank is Scary. These are horrors that either early or late game, they can be a bit of a threat, but they're really the lesser of evils. They're not super hard to deal with in comparison to other horrors, and really the only time they become difficult is when they're compounded with any other horror. This is going to happen at some point, but eh, they're, they're nothing to really get that worried about compared to other horrors. Next we have Frightening. This is essentially our middle tier. These are horrors that do pose much more of a threat, and you kind of prefer seeing them over uh, the high tier horrors, 
but that doesn't mean they're gonna make things super easy for you. Either early, mid, or late game, they're gonna be a problem. And then we have Dreadful. These are by far the absolute worst horrors to deal with. It does not matter when you deal with them, they were going to accelerate your demise the fastest. On top of that, these are the types of horrors that are just the most demonstrable because either they're in the asylum or the room, it does not matter. They affect everyone to a drastic degree. Some of the frightening horrors will also affect either asylum or rooms at the same time, but the dreadfuls are way worse in comparison. So, with that all set up, let's go ahead and take a brief look at these horrors. Now I'm going to be going in a random order, with the exception of the first card, because I think this will kind of help set the mood. Our first card is the Head Nurse Tannis. So here's her description. The first time this card enters the Asylum, the turn order permanently reverses. An example, players place monsters in the room of the player to their right, and when a player ends their turn, the player takes the right. The player to the right takes the next turn. Other effects that reference the player to the left or right do not change. So, her big thing is really only causing a change of order, which can be annoying, no doubt, but it's far from being the worst in comparison to anything else. As such, she's immediately put into scary. Now, yes, she does have a survive skill, that being that every other player gains one health, then you lose one for every player in the game. Now that can be quite obnoxious, especially since she has a 5 attack and 6 health. But here's the thing with horrors, they're the most difficult to purchase, for the most part. So purchasing them doesn't tend to have as much of an effect to me, especially since you really need the right kind of monsters in your hand if they haven't gone immediately into your room, but at that point if you got a lot of monsters in your room, you gotta deal with that first, rather than wasting really good ally produce to get more, get a horror into someone else's room versus getting better allies or using them to your advantage to remove monsters. So purchasing horrors, at least from the times I played, is A, rather rare and B, quite difficult. When it does happen, it's obnoxious for the person who has to deal with the horror, but we won't be taking those into as much consideration compared to everything else that the horrors have going for them. Alright, next we have The Mirror's Secret. If this card is placed in your room at the start of your purchase phase, your purchase phase ends immediately. So this is a good example of to why having to buy horrors is not the most easy thing. I know when first playing, we were using the effect of thinking that frightened patients would be able to purchase monsters quite effectively, or at least horrors quite effectively. They can buy monsters rather effectively, but not horrors, because their earn additional uh, produce effect only goes for monsters or allies. Horrors are not mentioned, as they are a separate type of monster. So yes, if you could purchase a 9 horror into someone's room, this would be absolutely dreadful, because you cannot get into your own purchase phase which is your most effective phase for dealing with monsters. There are only a handful of cards that have actions and that let you put in allies into your room or can have special conditions to immediately remove monsters, such as the last girl. So as such, because it's such a difficult horror to try to get into someone's room, I'm also going to put it into scary. It is an obnoxious horror without a doubt, but this is once again another scary tier horror. Up next we have patient number 502. When this card is face up in the asylum or in any room, allies in the asylum have their cost increased by one. This sucks. <laughs> this absolutely sucks. It makes obviously purchasing new allies way more difficult than it really needs to be. Thankfully though, thanks to things such as frightened patients, being able to have extra produce, you, whether it's early or late game, 
chances are you're going to take advantage of that, and only certain allies are a cost of 5, which is typically the most expensive, so with this they become 6. Most others range between 1 and 2, with a handful of 3s. So this is obnoxious, most certainly, but I would put this in the Frightened tier. It doesn't need any extra horrors to make it worse, but in of itself compared to others, it's not the most difficult thing to deal with. And it does have a survive effect as well, that being remove the topmost two allies in your discard pile from the game. So removing this one is a pain in the ass, but not, not the worst we've encountered, or will encounter. Next we have the Tattered King. While this card is face up in the Asylum, at the start of each player's turn, they must reveal the top card of their deck. If it is an ally, they may choose to either lose 2 health or remove it from the game. Okay, well here's our first Dreadful. This is without a doubt one of the worst kind of cards to deal with, because as it says, whether it's an Asylum or a room, everyone has to do this. And chances are, <laughs> you're not going to want to remove any allies, unless it's something not super great, but most allies, no matter their size, have something that you can take advantage of, even such as uh, the Unfortunate Visitor. There we go. That card is definitely an action-based one. But uh, yeah, this is, this is awful, because allies are your only way to combat any type of monsters coming to the room, but the cost of also losing 2 health is... It doesn't sound like a lot, but you start off with only 20 health, so that will add up fast. If this if this horror shows up early, oof, that's going to be a short game for those who can't really counter enough monsters and those who take advantage of purchasing monsters in other people's rooms. It, this one's brutal. This is definitely a dreadful one. And then it also has a survive effect. At the end of this turn, discard any allies in your hand, then draw cards until you have 5 cards in your hand again. Yep, that... That's awful. If this one does somehow also get put into a room, if that player doesn't have already four monsters within their room, come their next turn, the immediate uh, threat phase, if their hand's full of monsters, they just immediately get a whole bunch of monsters in the room with no allies. That's... that's crap. <laughs> Up next we have the Awakened Hunter the first horror I ever encountered when playing this game. While this card is face up in the asylum, or in any room, players lose one health whenever an ally is placed into the room for their hand. Now at first this seems like it can be not so hot, uh, like it's going to be constantly you're losing health, but there's only a handful of allies that have actions that allow you to immediately place them from your hand into your room. When it comes to the purchasing phase, your number one way of earning extra allies, this card's ability doesn't have any effect. As such, I think this one's really only a frightening. Not on the dreadful tier, at least in my books. It's not the most fun to deal with, but far from being the super scariest. It does have a survive effect if it manages to get into a room. Uh, you may choose to lose two health. If you do so, Choose an empty space in the Asylum and place this card into that space. If you do not, this card is not discarded from your room at the end of the turn. Even its survive effect isn't really that awful if I'm being honest. It has only a 5 attack and 5 health, well I say only, compound that with uh, extra monsters, that is something obnoxious. But you can honestly remove it. Losing 2 health is much better than compared to losing 5. And again, its effect is only under specific circumstances, so not the worst, just frightening. Just frightening. Up next we have the Whispering Haunt. While this card is face up in the Asylum or in any room, there is no limit to the number of monsters that may be placed in a room during the threat phase. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So like I mentioned, there's that threat phase. So when your turn first starts, and this is only going to really come into play as you get further into the game after shuffling your discard pile back into your deck to uh, have all these cards of 
allies you've purchased and monsters that were in your room you've slain. Monsters that were in your room that you've slain go into your discard and will eventually become part of your own deck. And at the start of your next turn, if you start your turn with your hand of five with any monsters, they will immediately go into your room under one condition that your room has to only have up to four monsters. So if you have a handful of five, you're only going to put down four in the threat phase. If your room already has two monsters and you have a hand of three, you're only going to put down two because the threat phase only has up to four monsters within your room. As this card mentions, it can completely remove that. So by certain circumstances, this can be absolutely awful. And this is going to come into play more towards mid and late game, not so much early game. As such, I'm not quite so certain. I would go so far as to say it's dreadful. But even though it doesn't go quite into effect early game, it is something you can start kind of conditioning against other people and other uh, to really start purchasing a whole bunch of small monsters straight into their uh, rooms which will then cause them to have to deal with that, and eventually they're going to come back around until you can somehow get rid of this monster, who does have a fair amount of health of six. So if it does, or this horror, if it does manage to get into a room, it does have a survive effect. Place this card into the room of the player with more health than you. So really the best bet is just try to get rid of it uh, when it is into play. I would say this is high tier frightening. Um, I'm not quite so confident I want to put it in dreadful, just because ah, there's also a few times that we've when we played where you're gonna have a whole bunch of monsters. Typically, you're gonna have a fair amount of allies as well. So eh, it's iffy. It's certainly a good way to remove someone for certain. This card does have that effect. But right now, I think I'm going to put it in just high frightening. It almost to dreadful. Up next, we have, and I hope I pronounced this correctly, the Hierophant. <laughs> May have mispronounced that, but I will have these cards up as I'm talking about them. When this card enters your room, reveal the top three cards of your Asylum deck. Place any revealed monster or horrors into your room then remove the rest of, from the game. Okay. So this one is also very specific. Its effect is not in a play while in the asylum, because you can't really do that. It's simply when it comes into your room. And then you have to take, take on all these horrors or monsters. Uh, so... As I've said before, being able to purchase a horror is typically most difficult because they're a cost of 9, and you're not often going to get a whole bunch of allies that are going to have a high enough produce to really take care of a horror, and depending, or to get you a horror, and depending on what point of the game you're in, chances are you're going to be using high amounts of produce to purchase more allies than uh, horrors, unless you can really get rid of someone who's been a problem for you. As such, I kind of think this one's just scary because of how specific her conditions are. Now, don't get me wrong, three cards is actually a lot. There are a lot more monsters within the Asylum deck than there are allies, and top of that having those horrors, that can make something really, really awful. But because of the less likely chance someone's going to actually purchase a horror, and depending on when she comes into play, eh. I really don't see that being super awful. If she comes into late game into the Asylum, you're probably already dealing with two other horrors or one other horror. That's way more important and way more threatening. So, I think she's just as scary. She does have a slain. Remove all allies in your room from the game. So if you do conquer this horror, uh, it's awful. But... <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's not so great. So, if she manages to get into your room, she's awful, but chances are rather slim, I would say. Our next horror is the Bone Gnar. 
While this card is face up in the Asylum, or in any room, each player loses one health at the start of their turn. Well, this is just an acceleration card. <laughs> it does not matter when this horror shows up, early, late, or mid. It's a problem for everyone, because it's just straight up guaranteed you're losing health. And as we've discussed, trying to purchase horrors is more difficult than it is anything else. So if you could try to purchase this thing to try to get rid of it, well, it does have a survive effect, so you need to make sure you can do more than 5 damage if it enters a room. All allies that are slain this turn are removed from the game, so that is an issue if you don't have enough protection, because most of the time allies don't have in themselves the greatest amount of health to keep you protected, so if they do go out, you don't get them anymore. This one I would say is actually dreadful. This, just because it does affect everyone quite consistently, this is guaranteed to make sure, at the very least, a game's gonna at most last about 20 turns. Um, maybe less, depending on everything else people have to deal with. So, it's shown up in a game for me before, and it, uh, it was not fun. So this is a dreadful horror for certain. Up next we have the Keeper of Lies. Now this one's interesting. While this card is face up in the Asylum or in any room, each player draws a card at the start of their turn, then discards an ally. When this card enters your room, every other player draws two cards. Okay, so this is hit or miss. Uh, obviously you have to get rid of an ally from your hand. That's not fun. At least I presume it's from your hand. But at the same time, you could end up getting a better ally, or you end up with a monster that is going to end up going into that threat phase, depending on what condition of the game we are in. The idea of it getting to a room, uh, kind of low. But that does make things a lot easier for everyone else versus the person who has them in their room. Because two cards, you only have to discard one ally. Granted, that could mean two monsters, so mm, that's a bit iffy. It does have a survive effect, starting with the player to your left. Every other player may place one card in their hand into your discard pile. I mean, that's not the worst, depending on what's going on. It does mean potentially a lot of monsters. I don't know, this one I feel like is more frightening. Early game it's not going to be the worst, late game it is going to be a difficulty uh, issue. Because at that point you're going to have more monsters, that means more chance of having something awful with the threat phase. You compound this with the uh, Whispering Haunt, that would be an issue. That's where two frightenings become dreadful, but this one I really do think is a frightening. So. That's where I'm going to put it anyway. Ah, here we go. The Malevolent Kitsune is our next horror. When this card becomes face up anywhere, all non-horror cards in the Asylum are turned face down, shuffled, and randomly placed in the Asylum spaces. Cards are not turned face up when they are placed in the Asylum, and face down cards in the Asylum have a cost of 3. When this card leaves play, turn all the cards in the Asylum face up. So, hmm. Here's the thing with this card. It's kind of tricky. Early game, I would say it's potentially more threatening than late game. Because at late game, as you uh, read the text, it's all of the uh, non-horror cards. So it's Asylum, or monster, or allies or monsters that get flipped upside down. So in late game when you already have horrors, this is only going to affect allies and monsters, not really whatever horrors you have present. And I would say that's not as bad. It's still annoying, without a doubt. If you, you're going to only have that first condition of the asylum, potentially a good idea of where some monsters, where some horror are, horrors are, or where some monsters and where some allies are, but you have no idea once you start getting new cards in the Asylum, and that's where it makes things tricky, even though they're all at a low cost. Early game, this is a lot more annoying, because at that point, if this is your first horror, 
any new horrors aren't going to be flipped upside upside right because you don't look at it when you put it into play. This means you could accidentally purchase a horror of three that could be devastating for everyone else. Because of the conditioning with this a horror, I'm going to put it as frightening. Originally, I was thinking it might just be scary, but I think this one actually can be frightening. Um, while it's not as bad late game, in my opinion, early game, it can present quite a lot of havoc <laughs> and chaos, so that could be an issue. Up next, we have The Eye of Shaltacha. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% certain. But it's essentially like some kind of virus. Or, I guess more so, bacteria. While this card is face up in the asylum, or in any room, allies in the asylum and all rooms have no game text. This is straight up the worst. I have dealt with this on my first playthrough. It was a late game monster uh, that showed up against my friend and I, and it was just the worst. <laughs> because you're really relying on effects from allies in your room to really help give you a boost as well as when you can purchase certain allies to give you an extra boost to deal with monsters because they don't have high stats it's the effects that they have that really make them useful having that completely removed is just awful 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 i hate this horror <laughs> i do not enjoy it at all it is absolutely dreadful it also has a survive effect if you do manage to get into someone's room. You may choose to lose two health. If you don't, this card is not discarded from your room at the end of your turn. So you basically, you either have to deal with this whole condition on top of being attacked for four damage constantly because that's its attack when it has six health, or you can choose to lose two health and just let it go, and so you're going to get better <laughs> effects from allies for, throughout the rest of the game. So. This one's just awful. Dreadful, indeed. Next we have Lockwood's Creation. While this card is face up in the Asylum, or in any room, every monster has an additional hit point. Oof. So, because I've mentioned before that allies tend to not have the greatest attack, but do have sometimes reasonable health, they aren't usually so great at taking out monsters just based on their attack alone. It's more so any effects that specific allies have. This does make it more difficult, particularly early on in the game, when you might not have as many of those allies present or in your deck, and you're really focusing on Frightened Patients and Stoic Orderlies. This is a problem. Um, I would say it doesn't really matter when the timing of the game is, whether it's early, late, or mid, this one's dreadful. I know it might not sound like one extra hit point <laughs> is the worst to deal with, but when you have cards that can't do a lot of damage, when you have allies that just cannot do a lot of damage, and you have multiple monsters in your uh, room, like if you got three monsters, which is a common thing that can happen, that's just three extra health you have to deal with and three extra damage you have to do that most cards came and seem to do three damage when it comes to allies. This one's dreadful. It, it is quite difficult to deal with. We do have a survive effect as well. Place this card into the room of a player with less the health, health than you, if possible. So that can be interesting, to say the least. And then the last card we have from base set is Dr. Lockwood herself. While this card is face up in the asylum, or in any room, monsters and horrors assign damage before allies. Yep, this one's dreadful. Um, the reason for that is because it's a reverse of how the attack stage typically goes. So when you have gone through your order of turn, um, your turn starts off the threat phase. If there's no monsters in your hand, then you don't have to worry about putting any monsters into your room. But you might have some monsters already in your room, thanks to other players purchasing them to them. Purchasing them. There. Then you have the action phase, where you can play any card that has actions. Um, Stoic orderlies, you can play them to your discard pile, which allows you to then play an ally from your hand into your room and draw a card. So things like that. 
On top of that, you then go to the purchase phase where you're able to turn cards into their, convert them to their produce to purchase any allies or monsters within the asylum. Then it gets to the attack phase if you have any monsters in your room. And the way it works is you get to choose how your allies deal out their damage to monster to the monsters in your room first, and then the monsters will attack your allies, whatever ones that manage to survive. Because this changes things in reverse, you typically rely on the whole being able to attack first aspect. And that alone, I would say, puts it as a dreadful. It's, it's not a fun card to deal with. It does have a survive effect if you manage to get into someone's room. Uh, choose a monster in the asylum and place it into any room. So it doesn't have to be bad against you, but it's a great way to troll <laughs> other players if there's something really awful in there, like the Bone Creeper. I think that's how you pronounce I think that's what it's called. It's a really obnoxious monster. I tend not to. Okay, so while we have finished taking a look at the Horrors of Base Set, I do want to look at the expansion because where I got this game came with the expansion of itself. So it's a smaller selection of horrors, but let's take a look at them, shall we? This is the uh, Seeds of Destruction, is it? Seeds of Evil. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. First up, we have Lockwood Podling. While this card is face up in the Asylum, every monster without a slain effect gains the following effect. Slain. Place a Podling into this room. So, as you can kind of guess, there's this whole plant aspect to the Seeds of Evil. And one of its interesting conditions is, uh, aside from the Asylum deck, which earns a few new monsters and allies, you also have this deck of Podlings. They will be put off to the side. Um, once a Podling is defeated, it is removed from the game. Um, here's a Podling card in of itself. They are a monster type card with two attack and two health. So it is not included in the Asylum deck. And if it is discarded, it's simply removed from the game. So whether it's defeated or you use other effects of allies. But they do have a, uh, a slain ability. Choose an ally in your room, if possible, and discard that ally. So this one is kind of frustrating because there are a fair amount of monsters that don't have slain effects. This goes to every monster that has a slain effect where now you're gonna have podlings come into your room come your next turn. If you defeated any kind of monster, because you're not gonna wanna leave monsters that have really nasty survive effects, ones that remove allies, ones that will constantly keep chipping away at your health. And while two attack and two health doesn't seem like it's much, because there's so many monsters that don't have slain effects that are kinda common, this can add up. I would say this is rather frightening. Not exactly dreadful, but it can be a top tier frightening, I would say. This one also has the survive effect of podlings are not discarded from your room at the end of your turn, so you want to really remove this one if it somehow manages to get into your room and not have to deal with a whole bunch of podlings, because there's a fair amount of them. All right. Next, we have the Garlush, Garlhe plant. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. I apologize. While this card is face up in the Asylum, at the start of each player's battle phase, that player places two podlings into their room. When this card enters your room, place two podlings into your room. So, that's, um, that's annoying, as we just went over. Podlings, when they are defeated, completely discarded, but because you have to place two of them <laughs> into your room at the start of your turn for the battle phase, so if you have already like three monsters you gotta deal with, here comes two more. That's awful. That's really annoying, because that two extra attack, uh, that's immediately four additional attack you have to deal with, and four additional health you have to try to remove if you want to get rid of these podlings. I would say this one could classify as dreadful. Maybe come late game with the expansion, uh, you've gotten rid of a fair amount of podlings, but this could still be a bit of a problem for everyone, because it affects every single person. 
So yeah, I'm gonna say this one for certain, Dreadful. While it doesn't have any like slay or survive effects, it's still obnoxious. And it's got a good amount of health if it manages to get into someone's room. So yeah, this one, pretty, pretty dreadful. And here is our very last and final horror. Excuse me. The Glowing Meteorite. While this card is face up in the asylum or in any room, every ally card gains the following text. Action. Place a podling into a room with two or fewer podlings. Then remove this card from the game and draw a card. Survive. Lose two health. This card is not discarded from your room at the end of your turn. So, this is an interesting card. Right off the bat, I feel like it's frightening and not dreadful. Because while it gives every single ally card this type of action, don't think you're typically going to want to use it. Because you have to remove that ally. Maybe under certain certain conditions <laughs> Maybe under certain conditions you might find an ally not the most beneficial so you might remove it then but I don't know Late or mid game. This is really not something you want to have to lose an ally But I would say it's still frightening because there might be those who do choose to take that risk and really it allows them to then place pod lanes and monsters into other people. So while it might not be super uh, detrimental at the time to the person who's using this effect, it is a good way to accelerate someone else's demise when playing the game. So yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's the list of horrors. That's Lockwood Asylum. Um, if there's any of you who haven't played this game and it seems like it might be kind of a cool and interesting game to play, I'd say give it a try. I, I really enjoy it. Um, I like card games in general. I like deck building games. This is this is really neat one to me. It's hard because it's meant to be. It's like survival horror. You're not meant to survive this. It's about just hoping you can outlast before anyone else beats you, or anyone else tries to get you or get your room filled with monsters. It's entertaining. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these cards. I think they have really neat artwork. Work. I hope uh, maybe you got interested in any of the other card games I briefly mentioned. We'll probably take a look at some of them down the line as well. I just wanted to do this because I really got into this game. I think it's cool. Um, I wanted to share it with y'all and with more people. It's awesome. I apologize if this was kind of a bit of a rambly video. I'm not really doing any scripting for my videos right now. Instead, I'm focusing a lot of my writing on some other project that... Uh, demands a lot more attention in that regard. But this is just something I do for fun on the side, so I wanted to get this out there. Uh, happy Halloween for when this comes around. I love this holiday, probably the only one I like left anymore. Um, but next time, I'm thinking of either talking about my thoughts of the DLC that was given to Pokemon Sword and Shield, because I did eventually pick up the... Uh, physical copies that have the DLC already on the cartridge. So I have some familiarity with that to see how I think it improved uh, Sword and Shield. Or talk about my top 10 favorite Pokemon from the 8th generation, essentially Galarian Pokemon, because I did not play Legends Arceus uh, before Scarlet and Violet come out, because I'm actually pretty excited for that. But you guys let me know, either we talk about some Pokemon first, which I'm leaning more towards doing, or get back to some Monster Hunter, where I'll probably talk about some more monsters again. But uh, thanks for sticking around and listening, and you guys all have a good one. Enjoy playing whatever games you play.